Hello mathematicians. Today we're going to be learning about equations with variables on both sides and more specifically we're going to be learning about equations that have infinite solutions. So we'll get a little more into what that means after we solve this. So here I have negative 8x plus 1 is equal to 1 minus 8x. And so if I wanted to start um, solving this equation I could either move my variables or move my constants. For right now, I'm going to move my constants, so I have negative 8x plus 1, so I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. So this cancels out because they're opposites, so on the left side, I'm left with negative 8x is equal to, and here I also have 1 minus 1, so that also cancels out, so negative 8x is equal to negative 8x. And so if I want to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 8. And I end up with x is equal to x because negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1, so that's x. And negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1, so that's also x. And what this means is that x can be any number that it'll always be equivalent. So, let me show you guys. So when x equals x like that, it means I could substitute x for any number. So, if I wanted to make x1, or actually let's do 2. So negative 8 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 1 minus 8 times 2. So negative 8 times 2 is negative 16 plus 1 is equal to 1 minus 8 times 2, which is 16. So negative 16 plus 1 is negative 15 is equal to 1 minus 16, which is negative 15. So by substituting both x's by 2, we got negative 15 is equal to negative 15. And if we substitute it for another number, for example, let's say 5, I have negative 8 times 5 plus 1 is equal to 1 minus 8 times 5. So negative 8 times 5 is negative 40 plus 1 is equal to 1 minus 8 times 5 is 40. So negative 40 plus 1 is negative 39 is equal to 1 minus 40, which is equal to negative 39. So whatever number we substitute for x will always be true. So that's what we mean by infinite solutions. So x can be any number. And that's because if we rearrange this, we have negative x, 8x plus 1 is equal to if we swap these two terms, we have negative 8x plus 1. So we have the same equation equal to itself, and that's why x could be anything. So our terms on both sides, I have negative 8x over here, negative 8x, and I have positive 1 and positive 1. So that's how I know I have infinite solutions. So the answer in this case wouldn't be x equals 5 or x equals 7. It would simply be infinite solutions. And that just means that x can be any number and this equation will always be true. So same thing here. So if we wanted to solve this, the first thing we would do is combine our like terms on each side. I have negative 6x minus 7 minus 7. So I could combine these two negative 7s. And I end up with negative 6x minus 14 is equal to negative 14 minus 6x. So we could try solving, so plus 14, plus 14, that cancels out, that cancels out, and we end up with negative 6x is equal to negative 6x. If we divide both sides by negative 6, 
we end up with x is equal to x, meaning we have infinite solutions here. And even before solving this, we could see we, we started off with negative 6x minus 7 minus 7, which we simplified to minus 14. And if we look on both sides of the equation, they're the same except our two terms are flipped. So negative 6x, and we see a negative 6x here, and a negative 14, and a negative 14 here. So whenever we get x is equal to x, we have infinite solutions. Now, what would have happened if instead of subtracting our, I'm sorry, so instead of adding 14 on both sides, what would have happened if we got rid of our x's first? So let's see. So if we wanted to get rid of our x's first, then we ended up adding 6x on both sides we could see that this would cancel out and this would cancel out, so we'd end up with negative 14 is equal to negative 14. So if you do end up canceling out our variables and you end up with negative 14 is equal to negative 14 or 5 is equal to 5 or anything without an x, as long as these two numbers are equal to each other, this will still be infinite solutions. because we could substitute x for any number and both sides of our equation will still be equal to each other. So same thing here. First thing we should do is combine our like terms. I have negative 4x on the left side and negative 2x. Negative 4x minus 2x is negative 6x and negative 6x is equal to negative 6x and in order to get x by itself, I do have to divide both sides by negative 6. So x is equal to x, and yet again I end up with infinite solutions. Okay, so that would be our answer. And one more final example. Just be mindful that sometimes it's not easy to tell whether or not we have infinite solutions because sometimes we do have to combine like terms. So positive 10, positive 4, and negative 2. Those are my like terms on the left side of the equation. 10 plus 4 is 14, minus 2 is 12. So 12 minus 7x is equal to... Nothing combines with negative 7x on the right side, so negative 7x. And I also have to combine like terms on this side of my equation. So plus 5 and plus 7, so positive 5, positive 7 is positive 12. So same thing, we're going to subtract by 12 on both sides. This cancels out, cancels out. I'm left with negative 7x is equal to negative 7x. If I want to get x by itself, I have to divide both sides by negative 7. And we end up with x is equal to x, which is just infinite solutions. And that's it. So for infinite solutions, it does not matter what x is x is any real number. It could be 1, it could be negative 1, it could be a half, it could be any number, any decimal, any fraction, any whole number, any integer, any natural number. could be substituted in for x and both sides of the equation will still be equivalent. And that's it.